what's up guys today we're going to do a little disassembly of the playstation 3 slim water cooled okay guys to start it off got it here on the uh, just ottoman here kind of tilted up with the uh, just some video games that way uh, the fluid is kind of away from this port here so that I could take the uh, that plug off and put a barb fitting with uh, just some tubing on there. And we stacked a couple things up. We're going to catch it in this uh, bowl here. So we'll go ahead and kind of remove these here and kind of lower it back down. And it should drain most of the fluid out since most of it is in this uh, reservoir here. And there's not a whole lot of uh, surface area on the inside, just the pump. And uh, that's pretty much it. Everything else is going to be in the radiator and the uh, reservoir here. Okay, got those removed. I'm just going to slowly lower it back down. It's going to start to drain out. Not too much since uh, it's kind of airtight. So unless I un undo this side, it's not going to come out too fast. But we'll go ahead and prop these uh, games here up on this side now to get it tilted to the left and we'll try to get most of the fluid out and then we'll continuously pour some uh, we'll take this side off once it's tilted up enough so that we can pour some uh, distilled water in there and just kind of cycle the pump a few times to try and clear out a lot of this stuff Now we'll go ahead and uh, take this end off and get the distilled water, pour some in there, and then we'll kind of either get a little plug or I'll just kind of pinch this closed just so that it won't uh, immediately pour out the bottom. We'll kind of hold it in there just enough to hopefully cycle some fluid through and get the rest of that out. Okay guys, as you can see, put some paper towels here just to make sure nothing spills. Took this end off. Uh, over here, I went ahead and put another barb fitting on the end of this tubing, uh, connected to this 90 degree fitting, and put the uh, plug that was on here and just put it on there, just so it's easier to fill it up, take it off. Uh, here we got some just distilled water. Uh, I took an empty bottle that already had purified water in it, made sure it was cleaned out, put the distilled water in here so that I'm not trying to pour this giant chug there. And uh, I think we might have to, oh, this might work actually. So we'll go ahead and pour this in here. Fill it up about halfway or so, because it will kind of splash a little bit once we turn it on. Go ahead and turn this on. Make sure the water doesn't completely go down. And there we go, you can see all the other uh, Whatever fluid I used, pastel white, has still come up to the top here. And now the PS3 won't let you turn it back off right away. I'll have to wait a minute. Otherwise, I can just unplug it if something happens. But uh, we'll go ahead and turn it back off. Takes a second. And then I'll go ahead and drain this out and repeat this process several times. And uh, I'll go ahead and finish this so we can get to the next step. Alright, so what we did real quick was uh, take off this elbow piece and put a uh, stopper on there. So I didn't have to worry about fluid going back down this tube here. And then same with this one on this side. We took this one off, replaced it with a uh, plug there. That way this radiator and reservoir are completely disconnected from the system and they're also sealed up on both ends so nothing's gonna go in or out there's probably still a little bit of fluid left in the radiator but I did tilt it back and up so that everything would kind of drain down this tube and go back out the uh, little drain I made this piece here um, so now we've got the top completely disconnected from the bottom and that's, I kind of designed it that way so that it would just be a lot easier 
to uh, take this apart so now this top piece can now be unscrewed and tilted up and taken off completely and nothing is connected except for the fan which the wire is long enough where you can still take it off and then disconnect the fan and uh, that should pretty much be it there um, and so now we have these two tubes here these are the ones that go into the system and as you can see the way we have the notches cut I don't have to try and feed them through they are cut like this so as you put the top piece on they just kinda go over it so they will just come right off so let's go ahead and take the uh, bolts out and we'll take a look at the inside okay so we got the hardware removed there now we should be able to just basically lift this up it is kinda heavy with the radiator and reservoir on there just tilt this forward and there's the inside as you can see we still need to unplug the uh, fan here and the uh, temperature display before we can actually take this completely off so we'll go ahead and unplug that okay so as I explained in the build video we've got a 4 pin connector going to where the original fan went 12 volt and that's the uh, 4 pin for the fan here so now this is completely disconnected uh, I just went ahead and pushed the uh, temperature display out because it's not actually uh, screwed in there or anything it's just uh, Connected in through this gap here and sits in there nice and snug. So we got that out as well as the temperature sensor that plugs in the back. Although it doesn't necessarily need to be unplugged, it makes it easier to remove though. And uh, this is the inside here. And the uh, problem that I had was uh, the Blu ray drive and these slims are just a pain in the butt. There's, I think, four different. Uh, ribbon cables underneath and they're all extremely short you have to try and plug them all in at the same time I don't think I actually finished doing that before I assembled this whole system and that's why I couldn't actually put a disc in although it would accept the disc in because the uh, power cable is connected um, it would not actually read it because of the other uh, ribbon cables so we'll go ahead and fix that and uh, just go ahead and show briefly how everything works in here because I get a lot of questions about it I also get questions a lot about where I find certain parts and although most of them are usually discontinued like the water blocks you might be able to still find a slim water block it's very specific uh, to the slim only it won't even work on the original PS3 another one is the case which uh, is from xcm.cc they have different cases for pretty much all systems although this generation and older uh, most of them are becoming discontinued however this chrome case the cyber chrome uh, as of right now is still available and the only other one they have is a completely clear case that comes with the uh, fan and a uh, clear blu-ray drive I'm pretty sure uh, that one's pretty pricey but uh, still pretty cool and uh, other than that we'll go ahead and get this fixed and uh, yeah, everything else, that's pretty much how this whole thing works. Pretty simple to take apart. Um, if I still have the original heat sink and fan, which I'm pretty sure I do, um, I would have to take it apart a little bit farther, but uh, I could just unscrew the uh, water block, put the original stuff back in, and then all this stuff comes off very easily. This is all screwed in here. Um, there would be kind of a hole in the uh, top of the case, of course, but uh, I could get some sort of grill or something to cover that up, and then it would be back to being air-cooled. Alright guys, we're on this side of it now. I um, went ahead and took the two screws off and unplugged the uh, power cables for the power supply. Go ahead and get that removed, because that kind of blocks the uh, ribbon cables here. As you can see, there's three of them on the back. There's also another one like in the center and that's the one that's a pain to make sure that it's plugged in uh, and it's only about that long so you have to kind of hold the blu-ray drive right above it stick your fingers in there and try to get it plugged in 
And then these ones on the back are also kind of short, but uh, I did discover that this orange one was definitely not plugged in all the way at all, so that was uh, my problem there. So we got that fixed. We'll go ahead and probably get that bowl of, uh, just that clear bowl and put some distilled water in it and just stick these two tubes in there uh, so we can run it without everything attached just to make sure that uh, that did fix the problem and make sure we didn't knock anything loose, anything's leaking in here. So um, other than that, if you guys have any other questions, just go ahead and leave a comment. Um, this is just an extra wire for the uh, pump. I didn't want to cut it off, usually I do, but just in case I want to use it in a project where I actually will need to use that. Um, I decided to leave it on since there's plenty of room in here to leave it. Um, otherwise this here is the uh, power for the pump. Um, and As I've said, I did the uh, four pin there, which is what the fan's connected to, and then we hook the pump into that so it powers both. The uh, temperature display is hooked into uh, this set of cables here, which has a 5 volt, 12 volt, 2 grounds. Because the uh, temperature displays are only 5 volt, not 12, if you put it in 12, it will get very hot and start to melt. I have done that before. Um, other than that, uh, I tried to make it, like I said, easy to assemble and disassemble. So. Uh, same with the temperature display, I have everything kind of a neutral color with the chrome and just white and black. So it's very easy to swap the uh, display out with maybe a different color backlit and uh, put a different color fluid in there. And that's why I like the clear tubing and uh, these type of reservoirs. But uh, let's go ahead and get it tested and put it all back together. Okay guys, so it turns out, uh, I think two of the ribbon cables on the back weren't in all the way. Uh, I fixed those, tried it, it, still didn't work, so it turns out it was the ribbon cable that's in the middle underneath, which is a big pain. The only way to really do it is to kind of take the cover and top section of the Blu-ray drive off, put the ribbon cable on the motherboard first, and then feed it through, plug it into the DVD drive, then put it all back together, plug in the, la the ones on the back, so I really must have just had this set in as a mock-up, and then I guess I never actually connected everything back together. But, long story short, that's all fixed. I have this reservoir here, just so I can get some water going through the pump and everything. Make sure that that's, uh, we don't have any leaks or anything. Um, and here we go, we'll go ahead and turn it on. Put a game in and make sure everything's working. A little more water in just to quiet down the pump as it gets the air bubbles out of there. Um, got this plugged in here. Okay, we'll go ahead and throw a game in there, make sure it's working. I guess the only cable that was actually plugged in must have been the one that powers it, which is why the disc would still go in, but nothing else would really happen. And there we go. Simple as that. It's all working again. Now we can put it all back together, test it one last time, and we should be good to go. Okay, now that we got the top put back on, all the screws put in, just plug this tube in here. And this other tube into this fitting here. We put our two barb fittings back on where we put the uh, plugs in. And we'll just fill it with some water. And we should be all good to go. Alright, there we go. I'll go ahead and finish filling this up. If you guys have any other questions about this, just please leave a comment. I'll try to tell you where I got some of the other parts, but I mean, uh, I mean, excess PC is most of the parts. Uh, Phobia, I like to use the Swift Tech pump. That's the one I have in here. Pretty much all the variations are fine, especially for a smaller loop like this. 
otherwise frozen CPU and performance PC is pretty much my two main sources for getting just about everything the fittings tubing coolant temperature displays all that stuff um, we will be probably getting into rebuilding the Xbox one in the PC case uh, at some point and try to upload more videos a little more frequently uh, also leave a link to my second channel where I'm starting to make some music stuff and other than that we'll do a little update on the car situation I have a different car the last one was the Lexus I had that traded in uh, almost a year ago at this point so I've had it a little while but we'll take a look at it uh, we'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching